time it snows. It's rare now. But every time it does, I'll take a walk. I'll get restless. It'll be late. And as is often the case, I'll be tired. There'll be a stack of papers to grade. An essay or a play I'm muddling with. Some to-do list for my thesis. There it will be. My professional life stacked on my desk like some ancient totem pole. The shape changes, but the pile never gets any smaller. I'll be sitting there with my pile, and outside the window, between the fire escape bars, I'll see the flakes coming down, sometimes slowly, sometimes darting quickly, smashing into the gray wall across the alley, and I won't be able to sit still anymore. I get that little buzz, you know that little buzz or ping or click or something that, that reminds you of what it was like when you were a kid? Not the bad stuff. Whatever baggage you have or things you missed or are still bitter about. I mean the pure, unadulterated vibe of newness, innocence, and wonder. This is what children have that make us watch them. You'll be in a diner, late for a meeting, trying to grab a sandwich, and there's a little girl twirling around, oblivious to everyone. She's singing, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And everybody, the truck drivers, traders, the Greek guy with the thick hairy fingers behind the counter, we all look, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. They always say that like one word, L, M, N, O, P. Everybody forgets where they have to go, how bad the coffee is, their day, their gripes, their mission statements and timetables, and they just watch this little girl sing and twirl. It doesn't last. They never do moments like that. Epiphanies, I guess. Some guy with the delivery of club soda comes bursting in the door and yells, Gus, come on, I'm busting my balls over here. We all turn and look at him. The poor guy's just doing his job. The little girl looks at him and sits down by her mother. She turns to us, the mother, redhead, 30s, talking to the cell phone. She turns to us, I'm sorry. And then to the girl, go on, Gina, eat your peas. <laughs> the girl sits down and looks at her peas. And the diner, the traders, truck drivers, the cook, all of us get back to our routine, to the now. And the moment is gone as quickly as it came. Before I go, I see the little girl looking at her peas, kicking her feet under the table. She's mouthing the words her mother as her mother talks on the cell phone. Q R S T U V. She's still in it. In the moment we've all left behind. In her alphabet song. When I see the snow coming down, I feel like that little girl. I feel the moment I mean shifting on I me. Mean. I'll try to shake it off, get some coffee, force myself through another few pages. The work telling me stay. The snow telling me go. And sooner or later, the snow wins. And I leave my pile of work behind and I walk over for a walk through the city in the snow. When I walk, I like to look down at the fresh snow in front of me and see where my footsteps will spoil the soft purity and flatness of the snow. I like the crisp feel of the slow creaking under my boots as it compresses the concrete below. If you listen, you can hear your boots sound differently on the curb than on the asphalt of the street. There's a smudging sound in the asphalt, more of a thud in the concrete. And sometimes if you find an old cobblestone street in Soho or the village, you'll hear it. If it's really late, now the horns and silence are blurred out by the snowflakes. As you walk, you'll hear it. Nothing. The old stones soak up all the sounds. 
They'll be walking down this lamp-lit street, and there's only the wind in your ears, maybe the faint buzz of a street lamp. And it's like you're in one of those old black and white movies. The city, its loneliness and magic and poetry, it all soaks into your shoes. You feel this old nostalgia for something pure and the excitement for something new at the same time. If you don't believe me, try it. The next time it snows and you're in New York and it's late and dusky, go out and take a walk. And if you're lucky, you'll find yourself in the drips of a little crooked cobblestone street, say Jersey Street in the Bowery. If you can find it, if you walk slow and cut out all the mission statements and to-do lists and routines in your heads, if you just walk with your head down, your hands in your pockets, if you're lucky, the snow and the wind and the lamplight will take you there. A little crooked, forgotten street in old New York, with one lamp and sad, rusty shutters running up the sides of two old red brick buildings. No doorways, no addresses, only a side street and snow and old commune. You'll hear nothing. Nothing but a faint buzz of the street lamp and the wind over the roofs. And then, if you listen, really listen, you'll remember what it is behind all those to-do lists and routines and deadlines. What it was you set out for in the first place.